All right, this is the first series of the SD-WAN and Microsoft Azure integration use case. So basically, we're going to build the topology like this. We have the branch router sitting at the on-premise at the branch, and we're going to integrate with the Azure infrastructures with the one of the VHub in the Southeast Asia and another VHub at the US East within the same virtual WAN. First, we start with the on-premise router sitting at the branch, which is in the VPN 500. Uh, it has the IP address of the LAN site is 10.5555.1/32. Then we have a virtual WAN configured, and we have a virtual hub configured as well. Then we have the default routing table on the virtual hub. Then we're gonna automatically spin up the network virtual appliance from the vManage controller uh, and connect directly to the hub, to the virtual hub on the Azure. Then we use BGP to exchange the route between the NVA or network virtual appliance that we just created with the default route table. And finally, we're gonna add uh, the virtual network attached to the virtual hub in this case, which is 172.16.99.0. Then we're going to have uh, full connectivity from the branch to the VWAN. Yeah, let's take a look how we configure it. First, we log into the vManage controller. We need to make sure that we have two of the available Catalyst 8000V inside the serial number list of the vManage. As you can see here, we have two of the devices already. Then we have the template created for the, uh, the Azure network virtual appliance here. So let me show you how to configure that. Basically, we use the default configuration here. Everything is default, and we use the default VPN0 and one of the WAN interface there. But what we need to insert there is, is the VPN template, which here it is VPN 500. And the rest is the default configuration. After we created the template, then we're going to attach those two devices that we have available into this template. And we put the parameter values, like the interfaces, then we, we put the gigabit 1, gigabit Ethernet 1, and put the system IP, site ID, and also the host name in for both of the devices. Okay, host is going to be NVA Azure 1 and NVA Azure 2. After we do the configuration on that, then we push it to the device. This configuration will be waiting for the device to come up when we go through the workflow of the uh, multi-cloud configuration on Azure. Then we go to the multi-cloud workflow. Firstly, we need to ensure that we have the Azure uh, account configured. So right now, it is already configured as the name is Satit, which is my name, and make sure that the cloud gateway is turned on. Then we go back to the cloud uh, configuration, the multi-cloud configuration, and then choose the cloud global settings. So this is a place that we can configure the default setting for the instance type on the Azure cloud. So you can change the, the instance type and also the subnet pools that you want to use. Also the autonomous system, because at the end we're going to run the BGP connect to the default route table on Azure. After we have done configuration, then we can go ahead and cr create the Cloud Gateway. Uh, in this case, it names uh, Cloud Gateway Azure ASEAN. Because it's going to be located in ASEAN region, then we select the Southeast Asia. Okay, we select the resource group and we create new virtual WAN because right now we don't have the virtual WAN configured on the Southeast Asia region. Then we just specify the name 
and it is pre-populated by the default instance that uh, that we configure in the global settings there. We attach two of the uh, uh, serial number of the routers there to be able to uh, get the configuration from the vManage controller. Oops, okay. Change the subnet a little bit because it's the same as uh, what we have it over there already. So then we just click OK and next. Now we are waiting for everything to spin up. Uh, as you can see from the logs here, it is creating uh, the virtual WAN. So basically it just go using API to talk to the actual portal to create the virtual WAN over here. So as you can see here, it is updating. So it's also create the virtual hub as well. Right now, as yeah, it, it is being created by the API from the controller to the actual portal. We just wait for a little while until everything is finished. Right now we have virtual hub created already. Then the next step is going to be spin up the network virtual appliance, which has two of the network virtual appliance there, according to the template that we already configured. So the, at this time, the network virtual appliance will be created at the Azure infrastructures and attached to the virtual hub. Looks like it is done already. Let's take a look at the Azure portal at this time. Okay, we are checking on the Azure portal that is not yet got information that we want. It might take a little bit of time. Uh, it should have the network virtual appliance configured there. But anyway, let's go and take a look at the controllers of the vManage there. You, uh, you can search for the NVA1 and NVA2. It is already spin up and successfully create the tunnels between sites to sites, uh, especially to the branch that we have. Maybe he, we hit refresh a little bit on, yep, so it comes up already, the network virtual appliance. So we have one vendor there, which is Cisco SD-WAN. Then we check on the routing information it has the default route table there. Then uh, we can go inside the route table to see the effective routes. Right now, we should not see anything because uh, the VNet is not already attached to uh, the VHub. Yep, so it doesn't show any result. Then. We haven't done the uh, the workflow of the uh, the the VHub integration yet. The last one that we want to do is we're gonna go ahead and um, create the we're gonna discover the the VNet on the resource group, and we're gonna tag it. In this example, we're gonna tag the one of the VNet there which is the finance uh, vnet that we have. So let's go ahead and tag it. So the one that we tag is gonna be the one that we attach uh, to the vhub. So we need to tag it so that we, we know what is the vnet that we're gonna tag, we're gonna attach to the vhub. In this case, uh, as, uh, as, I said, so, uh, as I said earlier, it's going to be finance vnet that located at the Southeast Asia region. All right, it is already tagged. Then we go back to the multi-cloud 
workflow we go to cloud connectivity and you can see the finance vnet host there then you just select to connect to the VPN 500 in order to connect to the branch it has to be in the same VPN because the branch has the VPN 500 configured after that uh, the controller will go and back and talk to the Azure portal to attach the VNet to the VHub and we can check the routing table again at the VHub site all right it looks like it is already done um, maybe we can go check inside the controller first whether it sees the status of the VNet already attached to the VHub the way that we can go check it is under the multi-cloud uh, option and then we can check on the tags now we have two tags that finance VNet host already attached to the VHub configuration then we go ahead and refresh the default route table on the Azure site it should show something the subnet of the finance VNet is the 172.16.99.0 slash 24 it should at least show that and I hope that it should establish the BGP and it, it should exchange the route between um, between the SD-WAN routers and the VNet as well going to effective routes go check on the default route table Alright, the 172.16.99 is the, the VNet uh, connection and 10.55.55.1 slash 32 is the route on premise at the branch that we learn from the BGP through the AS part of 65505 that is the, from the network virtual appliance that we just spin up okay, Then let's go ahead and connect to the router at the branch just to see what is inside the routing table as well in the SD WAN perspective. So, this is the router at the branch, and we go to the uh, troubleshooting. Maybe we can ping test to the server inside the VNet of the finance. Uh, the server IP address is 172.16.99.4. We can ping test and it is successful. All right, it's successful already. That is good. That concludes our first part of the Azure and Cisco SD WAN integration. We're gonna uh, go ahead and go to the part two for the uh, integrating with the. Azure firewalls to protect the server infrastructures. Thank you, see you later.